Today I'm doing an informational video as to why you can't believe everything that you read. So specifically, I'm looking at 2021's Best States to Live In by Adam McCann, a financial writer for WalletHub. He uses different types of metrics in order to incorporate a score for each state and then ranks them as to the best state to live in versus the worst. However, there's a big catch in that a lot of these statistics are biased and also don't really tell a full picture because COVID-19, certain states were active and certain states were not. If you're interested in some current events, then please follow my channel, Analytics Ariel, as well like this content if you want to see more of it. Great, so on this site, if we look at the top states to live in, overall rank is my home state, New Jersey, and the total score was 63. So initially I was thinking, yay, that's awesome, the town, the state that I grew up in being number one. However, it really was conflicting with a lot of the data that I've been looking at as to where people are moving towards and where people are moving away from. So why would people be leaving New Jersey in droves if it's one of the best states to live in. Well, then I looked a little bit further into what this author ended up breaking out the scores into. So we have affordability, economy, education and health, quality of life and safety. One being the best and then a higher number being the worst. So for affordability, we see that New Jersey is not that affordable, which makes a lot of sense. I mean, I have a lot of friends out there who are looking to purchase properties. They've been putting multiple offers and have to go over asking sometimes 20, 30 grand. Then we look at economy, which is in the middle. I thought this would be higher, but I could look, but we could look further into the stats below. But then this part, the last three is what really made me think, I don't know how accurate this is. So education and health. Yes. Education is top in New Jersey quality of life seven i think it really depends where in new jersey i mean if you're looking at quality of life in trenton camden and newark that's pretty low or in this case it would be a high ranking score because it's not that good and then we see safety as number one and this is where i lost all credibility for this site they're saying that new jersey is the safest state in the united states now if we look down to see how they are getting this data we could see safety is made up of violent crime rate, which I believe comes from FBI, property crime rate, traffic related fatalities, and total law enforcement employees per capita. Okay, well, we know that New Jersey was one of the states in COVID-19 that had a very serious lockdown where most businesses, restaurants were unable to be open, were at limited capacity, and basically there just was not many much movement going on. I have a lot of family members and friends who legitimately did not leave their house for an entire 12 month period. Now, if there's less people leaving houses, then wouldn't you assess that there's less violent crimes occurring because less people are getting to altercations. There's definitely less traffic related fatalities because less people are driving, especially less people are driving to work. A lot of people in the New Jersey area have good paying jobs that come from New York City. So you can kind of put two and two together that a lot of people would be working from home unless they're essential. Therefore, they wouldn't be traveling to work. So right off the bat, the fact that New Jersey's number one, I thought this does not make any sense. So I went back up to the chart and just looked to rank safety. And if you look for the top safe states, I mean, you have New York is number two, which blows my mind because there's a lot of times I would be walking the city when I was working there and definitely did not always feel safe, whether it was a lot of homeless around, altercations, what have you, reports of murders, rapes, assaults, and the like. So that's number two, New Hampshire. I don't really have that much knowledge of it, but I'm assuming that they followed very strict protocols for COVID-19 in comparison to New Jersey and New York. So right away, I could tell you that this safety metric is highly skewed based on what states were open or not for COVID-19. That's a real shame because I actually really like Wallet Hub, uh, but it's really important when you're in a statistics field to understand where any bias could be introduced. 
I jumped right down to the comments as well, just to see if there was something that I was missing that others could bring to light. And someone puts it simply right here. If New Jersey and New York are so great, why is the ratio of people leaving versus moving in about seven to one for the last decade? This article is riddled with bias. I think it pretty much just sums up exactly what I was thinking. And I showed proof as to why the safety number being number one makes complete no sense. Therefore, to conclude, I definitely suggest that you really take articles, rankings, and the like with caution as they could be heavily biased towards one side or the other. I'd love to hear comments below on what resources you might use that you feel a little bit more reliable. And also, what are your thoughts on this article? Thanks for watching.